and welcome to Behind the Lines. I'm Diane Dayton. Today we're going to talk about some important health issues and how we can take better care of ourselves. First up, we're going to talk about colonoscopies and taking care of ourselves so we don't get colon cancer. With us right now, we have Dr. Ben Lazarus. Thank you for being with us. Hi, Diane. Thank you for asking me here. And I think a lot of people who are viewing probably know you from the area because you've been around for a while. I have been here for a while, yes. Yeah. And you're a gastroenterologist, right? I am. Right? I yeah. am. So what does that really mean? Well, and and how did you start? Well, that's a good that's a good question and a funny answer. Um, a gastroenterologist is is a specialist in internal medicine uh, who has taken residency and subspecialty training to study the digestive diseases. So our uh, role is to help people who have problems either with their esophagus, stomach, small intestine, colon, liver, and pancreas. Um, and we, uh, we do that through a number of ways, and one of the ways that we do that, we're trained to do endoscopy, which is looking into the GI tract, either the stomach or the colon, mm -hmm. with lighted scopes. Okay, and this has a personal reason for you too, right? Well, I'm an irritable bowel sufferer. Most of my patients know that, and um, irritable bowel has been, been with me most of my life, all of my life, and um, I think it had to do with my mom's cooking, and I had cramps as a kid, <laughs> cramps as a teenager, and it wasn't until medical school that I did, discovered some of the secrets of irritable bowel, and uh -huh. uh, it was one of the reasons why I went into practice yeah. to do irritable, to do GI. Colonoscopy screening is essential. Yes, it is. It is. Colonoscopy is uh, the gold standard today for diagnosing colon polyps and colon cancer. Uh, it's a necessary screening test. Um, it's the best of all the screening tests that are available right now. And mm -hmm. we can talk about colonoscopy and how it's done and uh, what it means to the patients to have it done, having had colonoscopy myself mm -hmm. and having performed over 40,000 colonoscopies. Um, I have, a, um, I think, a good insight into, <laughs> into um, how this procedure is completed. Yeah, and when are we supposed to get our first one? Well, I think that if, if you're of average risk, that mm -hmm. means that you don't have a family history, you don't have um, a family history of colon cancer or colon polyps, or you don't have a personal history of polyps or inflammatory bowel disease, that the current guidelines are that age 50, uh, people should begin having uh, colonoscopies. There is some data to suggest that African-American males should begin at age 45, but our, our colleges now are really saying age 50 is really okay. the time to begin. There was a great article in the New England Journal of Medicine. Yes. What did that tell us? Well, this was a landmark article, and there was a follow-up in the New York Times. People may have read that. We've known for years that colon cancer comes from colon polyps, specifically adenomas, and that if you take out the adenoma, the chances are excellent that you won't get a colon cancer. Mm -hmm. We know that a lot of people have adenomas that don't go to cancer, but we know that colon cancers always arise from an adenoma. So it really tells us that if we go after these polyps, mm -hmm. remove them through the scope, the chances of a, of a colon cancer is significantly less. Well, we've, we've been following that for 25, 30 years now with data and uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York, um, in association with a number of centers, looked at a lot of their data dating back 20, 30 years. And what we've seen is that we know that we can get the polyps, but now we know for sure that there is an absolute decrease in colon cancer deaths. And that really is the key mm -hmm. to what we're doing. It's not the fact that we're taking polyps out, it's the fact that we're, we're making an effect on on colon cancer and whether or not colon cancer will cause an, an ultimate demise. You know, this year alone, 146,000 people will be diagnosed with colon cancer. Mm -hmm. 51,000 people will die in the United States from colon cancer alone. It's a significant and um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a medical health problem that we need to get a hold of. Mm -hmm. One of the big problems is, is that only six out of 10 Americans will have a screening test. Wow. And it's, it's the, whatever screening test they get is really the best screening test if they'll have something completed. Mm -hmm. There are multiple screening tests, colonoscopy, flexible sigmoid, which is a shorter scope, and then a barium enema, which has not been recommended. Virtual colonoscopy, which is the computer version mm -hmm. of what we do, is still not ready for prime time, but it's coming. Um, and then there are stool tests, which look at mm. um, blood in the stool, looking for DNA particles of colon cancer. They're coming as well, but they're really not ready for prime time. So colonoscopy really is the best test that we have for the diagnosis, 
the treatment um, of colon polyps and colon mm -hmm. cancer. So the tr it actually has gotten easier. Oh, it has. It has. I remember in training uh -huh. back in the old days when we didn't have didn't have digital colonoscopy. We didn't have uh, cameras. Actually, it was all it was all optical, and you would actually look through a scope, and it would take hours. Mm -hmm. And the scopes weren't very flexible, and it was uncomfortable. Um, we've come a long way. Yeah. Uh, in our practice at Regional Gastroenterology, we're the first group to have carbon dioxide rather than room air to kind of open up the colon so that there's no pain and though there's not any bloating. The scopes are very flexible and thinner. We use, um, um, we have board certified anesthesiologists in our practice where we use medications to put people totally to sleep so that this is really a painless, painless test. Okay. Having had it and having irritable bowel, I can tell you that I was a little concerned myself. Sure. And it was, it was having a power nap. Now, yeah. it's true that some people who have anatomic problems who have um, diverticulosis or twists or kinks or very long redundant colons can have difficulty with belly ache. Mm -hmm. uh, it's rare, um, and so are the complications of colonoscopy, mm -hmm. which can happen, but they're also quite rare. Okay. In our hands, uh, we have um, a very good track record of safety, and it's something that we're quite proud of at the practice. Excellent. We're going to put the website up on the screen, okay. which is uh, the G RGAL.com, R and right. on our website we have a lot of good and current information uh, on colon cancer prevention. Um, you can, there are phone numbers, multiple phone numbers where you can reach us, uh, or you can talk to your healthcare provider to, uh, to get a referral. Uh, but I would ask all of your viewers to mm -hmm. think um, uh, hard and long about screening colonoscopy. It does save lives, and it's important that we uh, um, we do these things. And they're they're not it, they're not pleasant, but <laughs> we have to do these things. But that's what it gets down to. We do need to do this. Yes, we yes. It actually this. is um, certainly more pleasant than it had been in years past. <laughs> not something you want to do all the time, no. but it's kind of a necessary evil. It's you know there there are only three cancers that can be preventable: mm -hmm. uh, skin cancer, cervical cancer, and colon cancer. And we have some tests that we can do to okay. actually help yeah. people not get colon cancer. And, okay. and even having colon yeah. cancer today is, is not a death sentence. Okay. Um, it depends on early diagnosis and treatment. All right, and that's what it's about. Thank you so much for taking time and shedding some light on this topic of colon cancer. Thank you, Diane. Thank you so much.